Hey everyone, this is Lucid. Welcome back to another episode with our Middle-Aged Ulm series. Uh, this is turn six, and we have run into Scalaria, and as I mentioned last episode, we had negotiated a nap with him in Discord. And uh, so anyway, he's confirming this in the game, and it says, Greetings, God of Ulm. Your scouts must have misinformed you. We are neither undead nor monsters, nor do we harbor hostile intentions towards you. Uh, a fight this early would put both of our nations at risk, and I offer you a nap three instead. So uh, we can both secure our borders. Best regards, Orcus, Punisher of Broken Oaths. Now, uh, the reason is, there's two reasons. One is he offered the nap to me, I didn't offer it to him. And I would have been fine with him just telling me he didn't intend to attack me, but... Uh, he wanted to agree on what our borders were, and he wanted this, and he was going to give this to me. And... Uh, <clears throat> so he wanted to do that, and then in addition, I, I don't want him to know that I'm attacking him, and I would like to be able to put a fort up without uh, having to worry about him attacking it. So those are reasons for Nap 3, and he can get a fort up uh, himself, and that's okay with me. I mean... <clears throat> He is definitely going to be my first war target, though. Uh, and I think, I mean, he must know this. I, he knows, I mean, not only did I tell him how I play Scalaria, he's going to play it differently, of course, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, he knows that I think they are an existential threat. And I think I even mentioned it in my guide that uh, the only time you can attack them and potentially win is in the reasonably early game. So I doubt that's going to come as a surprise to him uh, when we end our nap, but it will at least allow him to, you know, or both of us to put up uh, infrastructure. And I don't, I have, I'm a long way from securing my borders over here, and I really need to get on it. So we will be doing that. Um, I also have word because I've been talking with people on Discord that Jotunheim is my neighbor over here. And so he and I messaged, and I think he has an army here. I can see his dominion already. Uh, and he knows this is my cap circle. So he's not going to come in it, but I'm going to go ahead and lock this in. Ideally, I get both of these two. I don't know if that's possible. But we'll see. Uh, it may have been a mistake getting these flailmen on my early army. If you get knights instead, you can get an expansion party out one turn earlier, which probably could have gained me another province. So I think that may have been a mistake. But if you do that, you risk, if you have really hard indies around your cap, it may be your starting army would have trouble breaking out, but they're pretty tough. You definitely get more mileage in your starting army if you have these flail guys in there, but you know, It's a trade-off, and it it depends. I think it depends on how hard the starting armies are around your cap, which one's better. So this guy is now a hero. He has heroic quickness, which is kind of cool. But he also has weakened, so he's going to be doing a lot of very weak attacks. So uh, anyway, we are going to go... Oh, we didn't even watch that battle. Let's watch this real quick. You can see we won, but it was pretty easy. So hold, hold, hold. These guys are going to run in. And there we go. And you can see we chew them up pretty properly. So that is not bad. And then we're going to come over here and attack this province. Uh, Horse Tribe will do well against. It'll probably be a struggle for other people, though. We should do well against. You never know. Okay, we're going to Sight Search here. Um... Okay, we sight searched here, we didn't find anything, and now we're gonna sight search here. We really need a few air sights. The thing is though, normally you get an air income of one and you're like, oh okay, it's one air income. For us, one air income is gonna be a huge deal. There's also a death sight here. Um, but the reason is that one air income I can turn into one alquil once I have a hammer. So, like if I find one air sight, it's gonna be one, uh, one alquil a month. But if I find no air sights, it's zero alquils a month. So, 
Uh, I have no base air income, I just have to get lucky. Uh, so anyway, that is basically it. We're going to be attacking... These are cataphracts, and cataphracts are pretty damn tough. Um, we can kill them, but it won't be easy. I don't think I'm putting in more money on the archers, so... Uh, I have them pretty far pos are positioned pretty far forward. Hopefully they soak up some of the shots from these uh, deer tribe, and then they can go their own way. Uh, but we'll take that. Uh, we are not sending our prophet in with them. He's going to be building a palisade here. He also got diseased. Uh, I don't know if it was from this death site here. It's very possible. It was probably a well of pestilence. Uh, but anyway, he's diseased now. So he's going to die... And, well, that's okay. <laughs> uh, and I think that's it for this turn. This was turn six, so let's go to turn seven. Uh, turn seven, we found two magic sites. Holy crap. The Deep Crevasse and a Dolmen. These are both Earth sites. So Earth one and Earth one. So we got two Earth sites there, which is really nice. And then we searched somewhere else. Didn't find anything, so we're still no air sites, which we really need. Uh, we have some battles, let's go check these out. Okay, not great army positioning here. I think I waited on too many holds, like this guy's not engaged. This guy's only got one per tile. So he may, okay, he runs in. So we waited a, a little too long, I think, on the... Okay. This guy got crippled or something. Yeah. Okay. And then having heroic quickness on my dude is actually a bit of a blessing and a curse, because his bodyguards, which is the formation I have him in, uh, they can't keep up with him. So, okay, and the archers are coming in to shoot at those guys, which is fine. Okay, we've got a mage back here. This is an air random, which is pretty unlikely. I think these guys are a 10% chance to be an air random, but he's shooting lightning bolts at me, and we don't really like that. So he needs to route. Okay, there he goes. We might have lost some dudes in that. Uh, we lost one, so that's okay. And then the Atavi archers, they all died, which is fine. And then coming here. Okay, we probably had one too many holds. Like, we just took a fair amount of damage there. Um, so we were on five. We probably should have done four. I think five is pretty much always too many. I didn't get rid of it, but anyway. Uh, so we have that. Here's Jotunheim, and then we're going to go and attack him. Now, at this point, uh, I'm messaging Jotunheim, and I'm g basically giving him the spiel. And I'm, I'm telling him that Scalaria is stronger than Airmore, and he only has two neighbors. Uh, he has me, and he has uh, Jotunheim. So we... We can't tell ourselves that, oh, he's going to go mess with somebody else. Like, it's going to be an existential threat, and he's right next to us. And the guy who's playing him is a, a very good player. So it's not like, oh, whoever's playing him is just going to fumble around with the nation, and we don't have to worry about the fact that they're brokenly strong. So, uh, and then I think I sent him some score graphs of games where I played Scalaria, because I've played him like five times. And I think I've won... A lot of those games, I won't say how many, but, um, yeah. It's, uh, they are, they are very, very dangerous, I mean, and they only have one weak spot, and it's from turn, like, 10 to, to 25. And they're not even weak then, they're just not impossible to kill. So, um, anyway, I've told him that, and he said he'll think about it, but is telling me that we should that they should jump me. Which, you know, is fine. And Alm's a strong nation, but they're not, like, existential threat strong. I mean, they're not gonna just, like, 
I'm going to be limited by the normal things that limit you in games, like how much money you have and how much gym income you have. I just have some weird gimmicks I can do with cheap items and research. Which are strong, but it's not the Scalaria kind of stuff. Um, okay. So... Here we go. Uh, we're basically going to be... Uh, going to take this. Which, this will be a bit tricky, we may actually lose that. Uh, it's Lion Tribe, which are not great, they're kind of some of the weaker tribes. And we're just gonna be on hold and attack. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, we're building a palisade here. I've got my prophet now preaching. He's not going to be able to catch up with these guys to fight. We're going to be moving people around to site search. Uh, we managed to win this. We're going to come up here and try to kill these guys. And I've got this really weird script because while heroic quickness is cool, it actually kind of sucks because my bodyguards won't be able to keep up with me. And then if my commander runs in and dies, we're going to be in trouble. So my logic is that this guy's twice as fast as these guys, so if he attacks, and then he waits, and then he attacks, and then he waits. He'll run forward, these guys will catch up, he'll run forward, these guys will catch up. I don't know if that's gonna work, but we're gonna try it. Uh, Agartha uh, will actually have trouble expanding into this if he hits it first. Uh, because these guys are, horse driver good, they have lances and short bows, so they're gonna sit there and shoot. And then they're going to run into combat and smack him. But as soon as they run in, these guys' lances are going to just kind of wipe out their first wave of troops. So, uh, we will do well because we run in fast. And we are going to get there before their arrows run out. And what that means is they're all going to be shooting arrows at us and we're immune to arrows with shields. <coughs> but, uh... Yeah, so it should be okay. We do, this This is a very good squad against Horse Tribe. You can still get unlucky, but it's about as good as we're gonna get. Uh, we're moving this group up to attack. Nothing too impressive. This should be pretty easy if they have, and I don't think they do, but if they have uh, blood vine things, I forget exactly what they're called, dark vines which sometimes are in this kind of province, we could be in a little bit of trouble. Um, the other news we have is Jotunheim is expanding with a bless. I think I've heard that it's a region quickness bless, which would murder my knights, but uh, it's kind of anti-synergetic because if you have a quickness bless, then the fights are going to be quick because you're killing things, which means your region isn't going to last for as long. But, I mean, they're both really strong, and, yeah, so it, I mean, it's not bad. Um, okay, what next? Uh, we have another expansion party right here. These guys are going to be coming out and smashing into this, uh, and that should work well enough. This is going to be a problem, though. We've got 70 barbarians. And there's no easy way for Ulm to kill 70 Barbarians. I mean, let me just put it to you like that. The ways you usually want to do it is you want a strong front line of these dudes. Or of your heavy melee troops. And then you want uh, a lot of these wolves, because you just need things to do damage quickly. Uh, if you have, and ideally, again, you, you have some kind of short bow unit, which you've gotten from, you know mercenaries or something, but I don't know. The other thing we can do is if we wait until we get construction three, which you can see we're steaming along towards. It's only probably three turns away with the rate at which our research is going to increase. Uh, then we can do uh, legions of steel, which anyway, we'll probably do. Okay, we have uh, this guy. He's going to come out here and uh, site search air. And that's our third one, actually. I didn't even recognize. Yeah, we've gotten our third air random. That's just, I mean, the odds of this are just incalculably small. And uh, it's not like you get a certain number of air randoms and you're like, okay, that's enough. I mean, with this nation, there's so many good things you can do with air one items that we're going to want as many as we can get, basically. 
Uh, okay, so he, that's I think all the movement for this turn, and this is turn 7, so let's pull up turn 8. Uh, a message from Bandarlog. A warning from Bandarlog. Monkeys eating guru, gurus like mischief. Our guru researchers have been uh, playing pranks on each other and not concentrating on their jobs. We have scolded our gurus, and, and as a punishment, we have sent them along uh, with our expansion forces to fight. Uh, we hope that this will teach them a lesson they'll settle down in their studies once they return home. As an interesting side effect of their stunted training, uh, we have taken to casting some unusual spells. It seems... Uh, that they've come to like throwing around horror marks and curse spells, uh, and we ask you to uh, be very careful around our expansion force and to check with us if in doubt so there are no accidental bumps. We don't want anyone to upset their god, immortals, or special units uh, to have been permanently afflicted. So I don't know if that is directed at everybody. I guess so. Um, but... I, I don't think I have border band dialog, so I'm not really worried about it. Uh, we have a lot of battles now, so let's check them all out. This is Horse Tribe. And you look at this and you're like, okay, there's no way we're going to win. Let's see what happens. Let's fast forward a little. Okay, run forward, hold. They catch up. Okay, run forward. <laughs> Okay, it kind of worked. Okay, now you can see how this is working, because uh, the lances are dangerous, and if they surround us with lances, we're in trouble. But the arrows we're mostly immune to. Okay, we're getting a little spread out for my taste here. Be nice if they could... Okay, we lost somebody. And that guy's diseased. Okay. So we're running. We lost our leader. Our sweet, dear leader. Uh, but they've all routed, so they've only got like two guys left. <laughs> Which... So that sucks. We... That should not have happened. But, you know, it's uh, it's lucky. They can get a lucky shot and it'll go through all these guys' protection and one hit kill them, which is what happened. It's probably like a lance to the head or something. And they've got Sleepness casting on us, which is a little annoying. Uh, but fortunately, none of that stuff is going to hurt us. And you can see we just chew through them. Now, the thing about Vitamin is they're very high morale, so they're gonna sit there and fight to the very, very end. Okay. So that was fine, we didn't lose anything. And then here... Uh... Man, this was ballsy of me. I'm looking at this, I'm like, I don't think we're gonna win. Cataphracts are really good. This might be the end of our starting up. Oh, but we have... Our prophet, and he can do claim life. And claim claim life is gonna be the only thing that will allow us to kill these cataphracts, because it's gonna do armor negating damage. Yeah, you, you can see it just deleted one of them. And we just have to last long enough to get them to rout. Do they have crossbowmen back here? No, just horse archers. Okay, and they've routed. So that was bossy. I think I was thinking that even though it's risky, what else is this group gonna do? So we might as well take this. The old pikeman's in a, just a world of trouble now. Okay, that seems to have worked. And then coming down here, we've got uh, the final expansion of the turn, which was just clearing out the rest of our cap circle.
And we have a beautiful alignment here, where everybody's two to a square. Cannot ask for much more. And then we're going to go take care of them. So, okay, no losses. Uh, we have an event in Ulm. We found a magic site. Uh, an iron mine in our capital. Thank you. That's cool. We totally like that. Uh, so, uh, we're going to have some outgoing diplomacy. Uh, but let's talk about movement first. So, okay, we've taken this province. We're going to move our dudes back over this way. And we're going to have to start grouping up to take these barbs out. He's got some Rotarius and some Hestatus here, which I assume are going to take this province of the Ichthids. Uh, Abyssia, however, has claimed this, which is a province I really wanted. So that's unfortunate. Uh, he also has a big group of dudes here. Uh, and this is the province I didn't take. So we're going to be doing a few things. One is this is a very, very high value province. And it's totally possible... Okay, if Abyssia isn't going to come try to rush me and bum rush me and take it, uh, he's definitely thinking about it. So I've gone ahead and just done a massive PD dump. And I could have tried to Diplo with him in Discord, but I don't know, I didn't. So it's highly likely I'll lose if he attacks, but there's a chance I'll win. Uh, I, let's see, I can't remember if any of these guys have javelins. Yeah, this, these guys have javelins. So the javelins plus the, the crossbowmen will do a pretty good job at doing a, a large amount of damage. Uh, and then these salamanders, they die so fast. And they're really expensive. So if we kill them, then I don't have to kill them with my army. The problem is, once if he takes this province, it's like this is a bottleneck, he'll have to come through one. You know, he could go here or here. It's just going to be a nightmare if he runs through and is really aggressive and attacks me. And Abyssia is one of the nations that kind of can be. Um, I don't really care if he takes this, but it would be really annoying if he took that. So uh, there's a few things we're going to do. Uh, we're going to move this guy up here, and he's going to pick up these two dudes, and we're going to go kill these horse tribe. Uh, I've also told, I'm also going to tell Agartha that this is my province, and that if he's okay with me having that, then we can have peace. And uh, these guys, can, we have nothing right now that can take this. But in our cap, we've switched over to making uh, a combo of uh, these guys, the Black Plate Infantry with Flails, and uh, Guardians. And the Guardians, I don't know if I'm going to have to fight Jotunheim, I hope not. Um, because Jotunheim, I've told him we need to fight Scalaria, but he's kind of been radio silent. So, uh, if I have to fight him, I need to have a nice little reserve of Guardians. Also, if I fight Abyssia, I want to have a nice little reserve, because these guys are very good anti-sacred. And it's nice to mix them in like this, because what will happen is these flails are going to help get the enemy's defense down if they have reasonably high defense. And that's going to basically guarantee that... Uh, the Guardians, when they hit, uh, they'll pretty much always land with their Black Halberd, and the Black Halberd is really strong, so it's mostly just going to delete whoever it hits. Um, so that is that. Uh, we have this fort coming up. We've got two turns left on it. We've got this fort that we've started building, three turns on it, and I want to put another fort up here. This is my highest income province outside my cap. Uh, this one's also pretty high. Uh, we're going to be searching it here. Wait, whoops. Search. Uh, and I think this one's sort of high. It's got an arena in it, so it's a little better than it looks from the population for having a fort. Uh, plus, it can suck area or suck resources from all around it, which would be nice. Uh, Ur is here. I think Ur and I message, and we basically agree to peaceful borders. I think he wants this province for me, though. Let's see. I don't know if it's in this message or next one. So anyway, let's go through diplomacy now. Uh, a message to Jotunheim. How did your expansion contest with Scalaria go? Because I know they were vying for... You know, Scalaria's here, Jotunheim is here. Jotunheim, Scalaria. They're vying for who's going to control a lot of this region. Uh, and anyway, so I'm asking him how that went, and then a message to Abyssia, I say, our expansion was rather mid middling, we expanded quite quickly, in fact, 
uh, but it seems so did our neighbors, leaving us ver a very modest set of land. Uh, you appear to have expanded well. Who is the largest, smallest in your view? Uh, I, from my limited scout scouting, uh, from my limited scouting, Jotunheim appears the largest. What are your early game ambitions? Perhaps we can assist. So I'm, that's just kind of a normal diplomatic probing to Abyssia, seeing what he's thinking about the game. And then uh, to Agartha, I say, our commander seemed to have had the most un a most unfortunate accident while we were mopping up the horse tribe. We'll be taking that province post haste. Please contact uh, if you don't want to bump. And then I say to Agartha, also, uh, if indeed you are happy with us taking 131, we would be happy to enter into peaceful relations and perhaps consider a non-aggression pact. So, uh, that is the diplomacy. I can't remember if Uruk and I have talked yet, but if we haven't, we're about to talk uh, and negotiate peace. And, yeah. So I think that is about it for this turn. And I think, what is it? It's turn eight, so we only got three turns done uh, this episode, and I think that's okay. So we'll probably do three turns an episode for a little bit, uh, and then we'll probably go down to two. So anyway, thank you guys, and I will see you next time.